Australia's Parliament is hosting parliamentary speakers and presiding officers from across the Commonwealth for a special conference. It's included talk of parliamentary innovations as well as security and hosting Parliament remotely. Joining me now is Australian Speaker of the House, Milton Dick, and his British counterpart, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, Speaker of the UK House of Commons. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Milton, let's start with you. So parliamentary chambers can be pretty robust places. So what can you all learn from each other at an event like this? Well, I think bringing 32 speakers from across a number of countries and 120 delegates, it provides Australia an opportunity to showcase how we've handled the pandemic, but also to understand and learn from other jurisdictions about how they've dealt with remote parliament, online security, all of those issues, and particularly training for parliamentarians and their staff, which has been a big issue here in Australia in recent times. So the conference has opened and we're really looking forward to sharing those ideas and in particular learning from one another as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so Lindsay, apart from endless patience and a good school teacher's stare, what does it take to be a good speaker? I, th I think it's about having patience. I think it's about keeping keeping the temperature right, making sure it never boils over, just holding it at a level where you, you can get a good debate flowing from one side to the other. That's what the speaker's about. It's not talking about the referees, so if they're not talking about me, I know it's been a good session. <laughs> I like that patience. Uh, certainly something uh, perhaps we need, Milton, in a practical sense. Uh, how does a good speaker help Parliament do what it's supposed to do and pass legislation? Well, I think a good speaker is seen and not heard. And the role of any speaker across any parliament is to ensure the government and the opposition are protected and both sides have equal opportunity to express their views. And I think what I've learned from uh, talking to delegates so far and other speakers are good speakers have to be good listeners as well. It's an incredible job, an incredibly important job for our democracies to make sure laws and our parliaments operate effectively. And that's hopefully what we'll see over the next couple of weeks. It's been 23 years since Australia has hosted all of the Commonwealth speakers. So I'm really looking forward to meeting all of the speakers from across all of those countries but also seeing how I can improve my skills as a good listener and as a good speaker as well. Well said. And Sir Lindsay Hoyle, are British MPs as rowdy as Australian MPs on the occasion, do you think? <laughs> I, I think we've both got challenges. When the Chamber comes together, it can be at its best, but also it can be at its worst. And I think we both have the same challenges. Um, and I, I've got to say, overall, Parliaments are good, aren't they? Australian Parliament, the UK Parliament. What we can do is learn from each other, and I think that's what's so important about this conference. This is about the family coming together. This is about talking to each other about the experiences we've had within the chamber. I've got to say, I never expected to go quite as through as many prime ministers as what we have done this year. But obviously, we're copying the Australian model. You've done this in the past, so we're trying to play catch up a little bit now. <laughs> and the Australian Speaker and Senate, Sir Lindsay, uh, typically they don't get involved in day-to-day -day politics. Is that the same in the UK? Absolutely. I had to give up my party affiliations. I had to resign my party to take independence. Uh, so I, I completely go straight down the middle. I try to show no favouritism whatsoever. It's about keeping the trust and the faith in all the parties within that chamber by being completely independent. That's what I do and hopefully that's well respected. All right. And Milton, we saw some pretty colourful costumes this morning. Who has the best speaker's robe? I think some of the Caribbean speakers were impressive, but the speaker to me on my right, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, had a pretty ornate and uh, it looked like gold and black and some jewels on there as well. Uh, we don't have that in Australia, but I saw everyone in their finery today in the procession. We had a beautiful welcome to country, uh, acknowledging the links that the parliament has to our First Nations people. But it was wonderful to see the diversity of so many speakers, including a number of female speakers for the first time attending the conference as well. Fantastic. And so, so Lindsay, how successful do you think conferences are like this? You both talk about uh, patience and being seen and not heard and learning from each other. 
after these conferences, does that happen? Yes, and I think what's so important, it's about sharing experiences, isn't it? And today we started off, I was speaking on security, and it's about sharing and how we can protect Parliament, protect democracy, and that's what we're all here for. We believe in the democratic process. So this conference was a good way to start uh, what we have done in the UK, but listening to other people about what they're doing as well. Because in the end, we all suffer the same threats. People who do not believe in our democracy will do everything to stop us. And what we cannot is give in to those people who do not have our values, who do not share democracy in the way that we do. So it's so important. And there are many subjects that we will be discussing that's so important. And I can take that back to the UK. So it's important to me. But it's also important for the family to come together, to meet with each other, and to have the informal chats as well. It's not just what's been said from the lectern. It's about what goes on afterwards, over a cup of coffee, talking to each other. It's so, and so important. And it's something that I can take back. My knowledge, what I will have here, will be then taken back to the UK, where I will be sharing that as well. So I've got to say it's a big thank you to the speaker Dick for inviting myself and all the other speakers to come to Australia. It really is good to get us all together and I cannot thank him enough for doing that. All right well we look forward to hearing the outcome. Milton you mentioned earlier in the interview that uh, you'll be discussing some pretty serious topics including security and COVID. What will happen over the next few days in Canberra? Well we've already heard from a number of keynote addresses uh, Obviously, they'll continue. There's a number of important workshops that are going to be conducted across a number of key areas. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the report about the online safety threats that uh, all parliaments across the globe are facing, looking at how we can better support staff and protections of MPs and senators, uh, and also how online parliaments, the e-parliaments, the lessons we learned from the pandemic uh, and working out how we can improve democracy, working out how citizens can be better informed about their parliaments and how they can better connect to their parliamentarians and parliament. So there's a lot to get through over the next couple of days. I'm really looking forward to being the chair of this conference uh, and understanding what other parliaments have gone through so that here in Australia we can improve our democracy and we can see parliament effectively operate for the next couple of years. Well, we hope it all goes well and we look forward to hearing the outcome. Thank you very much, Milton Dick, and your British you. counterpart, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, Speaker of the UK House of Commons, for joining us this morning.